Hey guys, in this series, we're gonna be going through the three major financial statements, which are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. In today's video, we're gonna be having a look at the income statement. So I'm really excited to do this series because it is really, really important in investing to at least have a basic understanding of accounting, how to read these financial statements, and what are the major components. So that's exactly what we're gonna get into. In today's video, of course, we're gonna be looking at the income statement or the co statement of comprehensive income as it's uh, more common known now um, and basically I'm going to go through the major components of the income statement what's important to me what I'm looking at um, and then we're going to sort of analyze them in relation to our investments so what are we looking for when we're looking at the major components on the income statement and what do they tell us about whether or not the business we're investing in is a good or bad investment if you do enjoy this series make sure you leave a like and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below but for now guys let's jump into it all right guys so the rest of this video is going to be recorded on my computer so that way I can explain what's going on and while showing you um, a financial statement so the financial statement that we're going to be using um, to sort of use as an example throughout this uh, throughout this series is going to be Apple so if you don't know how to find the financial statements of a company I'm going to show you how to do it right now so what you can do is you just search the name of any company you're looking into any public company and you can search the name of the company with IR so that stands for Investor Relations. <clears throat> so you can either type in IR or you can type in Investor Relations. And this should pop up, should be the first one. Um, and when you click on it, you can see this is the Investor Relations page. So there's information about the stock price, financial information, SEC filings, uh, leadership in government, FAQs and contact us. Um, and usually on the front page, there'll be the latest stuff. So if, you, if you've heard that a company has a, a quarterly report that's just come out, it'll likely be just here. So what we wanna do is we wanna go and click uh, on the financial information tab, and this should show us the annual reports. So what we're looking for here is the latest annual report. Um, and of course, I do this analysis over many of the uh, annual reports that a company has for the past 10 years usually, or a little bit more. Um, but we're going to start with just the 2018 report for Apple. So that's the 10K annual report. Click on that and it should open up for us now. All right, so that should bring it up and you can see that it's quite long. So with these annual reports are very long. So what you're going to want to do is go to the, the table of contents um, and you can see here it says financial statements. Click on that and then we want uh, consolidated statements of operations. So sometimes it's called the income statement. Sometimes it's called something else. Um, like the consolidated statement of operations. They always change it, um, but uh, you, you'll be able to identify it because at the top it's going to have net sales or revenue and at the bottom it's going to have or near the bottom it's going to have net income. So that's how you know that you've got the income statement. So we'll just start by explaining what the income statement is supposed to tell us. So what it is, is it's supposed to be a measure of a company's performance over a specific period by giving a summary of how a business produced revenue and incurred expenses. So how much money did they bring into the business and how much was expensed? How many expenses did they have during a particular period? So the, the period that we're looking at here is uh, the year ending in September 29, 2018. Um, and often what you will see is that they will have comparisons from one year ago or maybe even two years ago. So we've got the 2018 here, we've got the 2017 and the 2016 results. All right, so first we'll just go through what are the major components. The first one is revenue or sales and it's also known as the top line because it's at the top um, and you can see here net sales and basically what the revenue or the sales tells us is how much money was brought into the business from sales, from business sales. So for Apple that would be selling iPhones. So how much did they sell their iPhones for? How much money did they bring in from that? Um, all of their services. There's a range of different products for Apple that they were able to bring in revenue. And their revenue for 2018 was $266 billion. So these amounts are in uh, millions. So you add six more zeros to that. Uh, and that will give you uh, $265 billion, which is a crazy amount of revenue. So just below that, we've got cost of sales, which is how much um, it cost to sell those products. So this isn't, um, this isn't, we're not talking about advertising or staffing at this point. We're just talking about the cost of the products that they sold. 
So they have an iPhone for $1,000 that they're selling it for. How much did the components in that phone cost? How much did it actually cost? And overall, to, for them to make $266 billion in revenue, it cost them, in terms of sales, $164 billion. So that means that after taking out, after taking into account costs um, for the components in in these phones and for their other things that they have, their Mac, their their watches, and that that sort of thing, they had 102 billion dollars um, in terms of uh, in terms of gross profit. Next, what we've got is operating expenses, and these are expenses that are incurred as a result of normal business operations. So an example of this would be uh, paying staff, um, you've got rent if you're leasing buildings and le leasing offices, um, and sort of like advertising expenses. And these will fall under this operating expenses tab here, um, and so does research and development fall under this tab. And you can see that the total operating expenses uh, for 2018 were $31 billion. Then we have what is called other income or expenses. Um, and these are income or expenses that are not as a result of normal business operations. So one example is depreciation, which is where you're writing down the value of long-term assets. So if you, bought, um, if you bought some machinery a couple of years ago, each year that machinery is slowly gonna get worn down. And as a result, you're going to have a charge on the income statement um, under that other income or expenses. Uh, that takes that brings down the value of those assets uh, as they start to sort of deteriorate. And you've also got things like interest expenses in this uh, component. The next major line is the net income. This is the profit or loss for the period. Um, and it's basically the revenue minus all of the expenses incurred during that period. And you can see for Apple, they had just under $60 billion in profit for 2018. Now, the next important thing here we've got is earnings per share. Now, this is simply the net income, which is 60 billion, divided by how many shares there are outstanding. So, how many pieces of businesses, how many pieces of business are there? How many pieces is Apple broken down into? Um, and on a diluted basis, it's broken down into uh, 5 million shares, actually. So, 5 million shares. Um, and if you take 60 billion and divide it by 5 million, you get just under $12 per share of earnings. Now, a question that I get asked quite a lot is what is the difference between diluted and basic EPS? Often they're the same and usually they're very close, but there is often a slight difference and usually the diluted will be a little bit smaller than the basic. So I'll, I'll just explain what the difference is. So basically you always want to use the diluted EPS number in your calculations and this is because it includes all outstanding shares plus potential shares. So all of the shares that currently exist, plus all the shares that could potentially exist. And I'll explain what I mean. So often companies will compensate their managers with convertible shares, which means that they only receive the shares if the stock price reaches a certain price. So if the business does pretty well, and therefore the stock price does well, these managers will be compensated with shares. So these shares don't exist right now, because they haven't hit those, um, they haven't hit those performance measures yet. But if they do hit them, then they will get the shares. So those shares are what we would call potential shares. And of course, those additional shares mean that profit is split between more shares, which reduces the value of each individual individual share. So, in my opinion, and in a lot of people's opinions, I think um, it's always smart to use the diluted numbers and to assume that all of the potential shares will eventually be converted into actual shares. It's just a way of being more conservative. So let's now just talk about some of the positive and negative signs that we can identify on the income statement. So a couple of positive ones. The income statement basically has two major numbers that we're going to be using in our analysis. Those numbers are the revenue, the top line, how much money they're bringing in, and this diluted EPS. So how much money is left over after all the expenses, the top and the bottom line. Now, a positive sign is to see both of these numbers have been growing over the past 10 years. So what we're looking for is we're looking for an average growth rate over the past 10 years of at least 10%. And we want growth out of these numbers to be consistent over time or growing over time. So if they have 10% growth over a 10-year period, 
then we want to see that the five year period has maybe 12% growth and then the one year average growth is maybe 15%. So we wanna see that it's increasing over time or at least that it's consistent, that they're maintaining 10% growth per year. Now, a negative sign on the flip side would be if only one of these numbers is growing. So if revenue growth is strong, so the top line is growing strongly, um, but the EPS isn't growing strong or it's shrinking, it could indicate that the company is experiencing rising costs faster than the growth of the revenue. Now, one misconception is that if a company has revenue growth but no earnings, it just means that they're investing within the business. And this is not true. This is incorrect because investments in the future don't appear on the income statement. I'll just repeat that. Investments in the future do not appear on the income statement. Expenses are only included in the income statement if the benefits of that expense are used up during the period. Now that might be a little bit confusing, so I'll give you an example and hopefully this will help you understand. So if a company buys the entire year's worth of inventory in January, that cost will not be included in the first quarter income statement. What will be included in the first quarter income statement is how much inventory they use, how much stock they sell in the first quarter. So it doesn't matter how much they buy, it matters how much they sell. So that means that let's say they use half the inventory in the first quarter. So they buy the entire year's worth in January and then they go on to use half of that. Then half of that initial cost is going to be expensed in the first quarter and the rest will be expensed when the inventory is used. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that a company with no earnings is one that's just investing a lot of money into the future. That's taking on expenses that are going to reap benefits later. That's not true. The expense is only included on the income statement if the benefit has been received during that period. And when I mean benefit, I just mean that they've had some kind of cash or revenue inflow as a result of it. So another example might be that um, they might decide to pay their staff one year in, in advance. So that they're not going to expense the staff's uh, whole year of cost, the whole salaries for those staff at the start in the first quarter, it's going to be expensed um, spread evenly over the year as the staff sort of work their job over the year. So even though they've paid in cash up front, the expense will appear as if they've paid it normally throughout the course of the year, if that makes sense. So we definitely want to see both of these numbers growing. We need to see the top line growing and the bottom line growing. It's not enough just to see the top line growing. Another negative sign would be if the earnings per share was growing, but the revenue was declining. Now this can indicate that they are effectively reducing costs which because if revenue, if they're not bringing in more money, if they're bringing in less money, yet they're keeping more at the end of the year, that means that they've lowered their costs, which is a good sign. However, a, decre a decrease in the amount of money brought in by the business over time will limit how much profit the company can make. Even if revenue isn't decreasing but is just not growing, like it's just flat, for the company to increase its profits, they need to reduce costs without impacting revenue, which is again another limiting factor. So we don't want to see any of those signs. We just want to see revenue and earnings per share both growing at above 10% over the long term. So that's all you need to know about the income statement. And just to summarize, the main numbers that we're focused on are the net sales, that's the top line, and the earnings per share, the diluted earnings per share, which is the bottom line, how much they're keeping at the end of the day. And we're basically looking for both of these numbers to be growing at over 10% per year for 10 years, plus as a bonus, we want the growth to be getting better each year. So let's have a look at Apple's growth over time just to show you what this looks like uh, when we analyze these two numbers. All right, so in my spreadsheet, I've inputted the sales at the top here from 2008 until 2017. Now, this hasn't been updated for the 2018 financial year, so I apologize for that, um, but it is just an example, so it doesn't matter too much. And then below that, we've got the earnings per share from 2008 to 2017. And if we come over to the growth tab, uh, we can have a look at sales. So we can see that over the 10-year average, they've averaged 24% per year, which is great. That's above our 10%. But as you can see, it's been declining each year, which is a bad sign because it means growth in sales is slowing down. And that's to be expected. The company is massive. 
and I'm not discrediting Apple as a, as a company, but as an investment, we want to see this number growing so that we know that they are bringing in more and more and more revenue each year. And it means that there's not too much pressure on reducing expenses on this company. Just below that, we've got EPS, which over the long term is crazy, 32% per year. And it was declining for a little bit. In fact, it is still trending downward. Um, but in the last three and one year averages, they've been pretty close. You can see that over the five year average, it declined down to below our 10% minimum requirement, but then it came back up. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with Apple over the next couple years to see if they can return to that high growth stage. But that's all for this video. Um, catch me in the next video of this series talking about the balance sheet. Now, if this video has been out for a while, that video might be out. So I suggest that you go check that out. Um, but of course, we're going to be talking about the balance sheet. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And if you did, make sure you leave a like on the video and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. But I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.